Hey folks, today I've got some super explosive news to spill. Imagine this, a round, plump robot like a giant bowling ball that can roll on land, swim in water, and perform all sorts of high-tech operations. On October 9th, a team of scientists from Zhejiang University unveiled something called the RTG Spherical Robot, claiming it's a water, land, amphibious reconnaissance and strike integrated super weapon as soon as this news broke chinese media went into a frenzy and netizens skyrocketed into euphoria flooding the comment section with phrases like domestic innovation technological breakthrough military powerhouse but wait a minute after a night of intense research and deep analysis actually just staying up late scrolling through billy Blee, I discovered that behind this so-called black technology, there are so many unspeakable secrets. Speed of 35 kilometers per hour. Wow, so fast. But think about it. On the battlefield, this speed probably can't even catch up with the enemy's car exhaust, right? Withstanding four tons of impact. Seems like it can handle small artillery shells, but guess what? I've done my homework. The Americans achieved similar technology over 10 years ago, and their version is even heavier. Main attack method is collision. Isn't that a bit too simple and crude? On the battlefield, a bunch of iron balls rolling around might even interfere with other weapons. Practicality might be questionable. At this point, does anyone feel this ball looks familiar? That's right. Isn't this just a copy of the guard bot developed by the US over a decade ago? The CCP's independent innovation is once again questioned as plagiarism. As early as 2004, when we were still using Nokia 3300s, the US had already started developing such spherical robots. Their goal at that time was to send this round guy to Mars. By 2015, the US Navy and Marine Corps suddenly became interested in the GuardBot and began field tests. Later, they found that although the GuardBot could operate on land and water, it was too slow on actual battlefields and not as practical as ordinary drones and ground vehicles. So the concept was abandoned by the US military. So what China's doing with this RTG is playing with a relic from over a decade ago, something that Americans have already grown tired of. Comparing the two, isn't it a bit embarrassing? Let's take a look at where their so-called innovation actually lies. Number one, speed. China's boasting that the RTG can reach 35 kilometers per hour, which sounds pretty fast, but the American Garbot could reach 32 kilometers per hour even when climbing a 30 degree slope. Comparing the two, the CCP's black technology doesn't seem so black after all. Number two, endurance. Now, this gets interesting. The American Garbot can operate continuously for 16 hours, but what about China's RTG? They didn't mention endurance at all. Are they afraid that revealing it would expose them? Number three, functionality. Even more intriguing, the American Garbot can conduct reconnaissance, detect explosives, and even carry explosives. China's RTG, it mainly relies on collision as its attack method. This move is really being outclassed by the US. Number four, intelligence. The American Guardbot requires manual remote control, which was impressive 20 years ago, but China's RTG is boasting big time, equipped with an L4 level fully autonomous driving system. Is this for real? You know, level four autonomous driving hasn't even been fully achieved by Tesla yet. Up to this point, doesn't it feel like China's black technology is really just plagiarism? But what's truly alarming is what's next. Some of the CCP's media and netizens have started fantasizing about various military applications on the RTG online. The scenes are just unbearable. Someone suggested replace it with bulletproof materials, strengthen its collision force, and use it directly as a tank to crush. Bro, do you think this is Transformers? Is modification that simple? Another one said, install C4 explosives, turn it into a suicide truck, rush it into enemy's camp, and set off fireworks. Has this netizen watched too much shockwave about bomb disposal experts? Do you think this is a movie? Real warfare doesn't work like that. Even more outrageous, some netizens linked it to sci-fi movies like the alien mechanical spheres in Battleship. Wake up. That's just a movie plot. Real world technology is far from that level. 
Some netizens went wild imagining future battlefields. Taiwanese soldiers have drones overhead, robot dogs roaming the ground, spherical robots rolling out from the sea, occupying beachheads. This netizen's imagination is truly limitless. One predicted information warfare, dual artificial intelligence, integrating drones, robot dogs, spherical robots, reconnaissance planes, reconnaissance strike, integrated aircraft, and space satellites capable of identifying enemy leaders and ordinary soldiers. It can target them and say, if you're killed or injured, you can't repay your mortgage and the bank will repossess your home. This way, we can make the enemy surrender. This is simply technological terrorism. Using technology for total control has already broken the ethical bottom line of warfare. Such ideas are chilling. Some even joked, use 10 RTGs to exchange for one enemy soldier's life. Has this netizen played too much StarCraft? Human lives are at stake. How can you calculate like this? And shouldn't there be some chivalry in warfare? You're sending a bunch of metal lumps while the other side is flesh and blood. Besides, if you're going to fight like this, you might as well play a game. At least in games, you can respawn after dying. Honestly, seeing these comments, I can't help but worry for some people. This way of thinking is really dangerous. Moreover, the cost of war goes far beyond the battlefield and has far-reaching impacts. Imagine if robots are really used in the future wars. The scene is simply unimaginable. Government pours all the money into making robots, education, and healthcare. Sorry, no funds. But then kids can't afford school, people can't afford medical care. What kind of society is that? Unemployment rates soar because warfare doesn't need humans, and factories are all run by robots. Everyone's unemployed, sitting at home doing nothing. Prices skyrocket. After all, making robots is expensive. Ordinary folks have to think twice before buying a cabbage. In the end, people might rebel, protest in the streets, social unrest. At that point, even robots might not be able to control the situation. But on the second thought, this kind of thing might actually be useful in China. If these robots are used for maintaining stability, the scenes are also unimaginable. For example, someone proposed monitoring the public, 360-degree panoramic cameras, no blind spots, basically moving surveillance. Suppressing protest, a bunch of iron balls rolling over, who dares to stand still? Scarier than police charges, who would dare to take to the streets? Everyone would behave, not even dare to speak loudly, in fear of attracting a swarm of iron balls. Some netizens even said they can patrol during peacetime to maintain law and order, and during wartime, switch to live ammunition and defend the city and prevent enemy intrusion. What would that turn cities into? Iron balls rolling everywhere. How can citizens live normally? This is turning peaceful cities into battle zones. But certain people in China are actually thinking of these practical application scenarios. After all, isn't this the CCP government's dream of perfect control? So imagine this. You're walking down the street and suddenly an iron ball rolls up to you and says, please show your ID. You hurriedly pull out your ID thinking, oh no, did I accidentally jaywalk? Then the iron ball says, your social credit score is insufficient. You cannot enter this area. What's even scarier is that some netizens are discussing how to upgrade these iron balls. Someone said, equip them with electric shock devices. If someone doesn't cooperate, zap them directly. Another suggested, let them automatically recognize abnormal behavior. If they detect suspicious individuals, they automatically alert the authorities. Hearing these ideas, don't you feel a chill down your spine? But speaking of which, this boar robot supposedly has peaceful users too. The report mentioned things like fully enclosed design, adaptive motion control, autonomous driving system. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? But in the comment section, there's a lot of trace of these so-called peaceful users. Everyone's discussing warfare. At this point, I have to rant a bit. It's already 2024 and the whole world is working on AI, quantum computing, controlled nuclear fusions, while China is still copying a 20-year-old toy and still calling themselves a technological powerhouse. Moreover, technological development shouldn't just pursue superficial innovation. It should focus more on practical applications and ethical boundaries. Look at the US. They're using this kind of technology for Mars exploration. Then look at China. What are they thinking about? 
ultimately, technological development is meant to benefit humanity, not to oppress the populace. Of course, some Chinese netizens are trying to steer the conversation towards broader applications. Someone humorously said, a few words float through my mind. Chinese football is saved. At least they're discussing more peaceful sports. Some Chinese citizens revealed online that China proposed banning the militarization of robots at the UN but was rejected. This netizen analyzed, China knows the other members wouldn't agree, so it deliberately proposed it for them to oppose, so it can continue with the militarization with peace of mind, appearing peaceful while secretly advancing military technology. Others said this is an old trick. Last time, there was a proposal to ban Japan from land reclamation, which was rejected. China protested against the Philippines building islands, which was also revoted. Then China immediately started building islands on the South China Sea without any hesitation. Some Chinese commentators bluntly said, this is like getting the UN's signed consent to militarize robots. After being rejected, Xi Jinping just went ahead full throttle. Others summarize major military technologies are like this. The big countries develop them first, then prohibit other countries from using them. These netizens are exposing the CCP's maneuvers on the international stage, pretending to be the good guys by proposing to oppose what they want to do. And when others reject their opposition, the CCP goes ahead. RTG's military applications have sparked all kinds of wild imagination and discussions among netizens. From sci-fi to reality, from war to peace, from military to international politics, leaving people utterly stunned. Analyzing Chinese netizens' discussion tendencies. Have you noticed that when Chinese people discuss technology, they can't avoid topics of fighting and warfare? What's going on here? After careful analysis, I found that Chinese tech discussions have several characteristics. Number one, strong military association. They think about whether everything can be used in war. When they see new technology, their first reaction is, can this be used to attack Taiwan? Number two, particularly concerned about national strength. Technology seems to be only for making the country stronger. They don't consider how technology could help them work less over time or get more sleep. Number three, overly optimistic about technology. Thinking that with technology, all problems can be solved. Is that really the case? Can technology in China solve overcrowded subways and excessive overtime? Number four, rarely discuss ethical issues. As long as the technology can be used, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, they'll use it first. This way of thinking is simply playing with fire. Folks, why do you think this is? Could it be related to the CCP's propaganda and education? Some say the government has long emphasized backwardness and vice aggression, making Chinese people feel that developing technology is for winning wars. From a young age, Chinese people's minds are filled with phrases like technological powerhouse, national defense modernization, etc. Therefore, when they hear about technology, their first reaction is, wow, can this be used to defend the country? The CCP's education might have turned part of the Chinese populace into warmongers, but in the West, when people hear about new technology, their first reaction isn't to think about how to use it in warfare. Instead, they think, Wow, can this make our lives better? Can this help us solve global warming? Can this help more people have enough to eat? The difference in thinking is huge. Let's talk about these scientists. Chinese scientists are always busy borrowing foreign technology. When they finally have some innovation, it's used for military purposes. But in the West, there are numerous scientists, not only in military realms, but environmental, medical, educational, and so on. Some Chinese people noticed this prevalent militaristic mindset in China, saying after this video was posted on Chinese networks, 90% of the comments were about military applications. In other countries, when people see this spherical robot, they think about using it to protect the environment, govern the oceans, or handle nuclear waste. That's the correct way to approach technology. It's obvious that once the CCP has technology, they want to use it militarily. And once they have military equipment, they want to threaten and change the international order, even to the point of attacking others. From these netizens' remarks, we can see the CCP government's motivation.
Honestly, the Chinese people's nationwide enthusiasm for militizing technology is concerning. Does this mean that CCP's fight mentally has too much influence, making Chinese people naturally lean that way? Could this make certain war decisions easier? This is a dangerous signal. Finally, I have to say peace is most important. Instead of researching how to fight wars, why not focus on how to let everyone live better lives? Speaking of this, I really feel that it's a serious issue why China's discussion about technology always involve fighting and killing. This topic might be a bit heavy, but it's necessary to talk about it. What do you think? Feel free to leave comments below. I'm waiting to see your brilliant comments. Maybe your messages will wake some people up. Don't forget to like and follow. We'll continue brainstorming in the next episode. Mm -hmm.